do that, Karam. This is what you don't understand. I've got my period on this trip. <laughs> I've been in bread 39 years. <laughs> A sushi. Oh my god, sushi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are Karam and Eleanor. Okay. <laughs> this is the third video in our Algonquin series, recounting our three week canoe trip across Algonquin Park, Canada, in the fall of 2019. This was our first portage trip, and as you will soon find out, neither one of us really knew what we were doing. <laughs> our route started and ended at Opiongo, stretching up to Brent, then back down. This video will take us from Burnt Route to Brent on Cedar Lake. One week today. <laughs> Remember how I told you it never rains on my birthday? You can see! Well, I was right. Dealing with a little bit of a hurricane situation over here. By a few hours. <laughs> Wait till I'm drenched, hungry, and then he's gonna fucking realize what complaining Eleanor really is. I felt excited to finally be challenged and to put my rain suit to the test. The water was extremely choppy. I was pretty stressed about the wind, but we stayed very close to the shore. Karam always stays very calm under pressure, which I love. Truffle. Maybe truffles are friendly. He's very Canadian, baby. Why? Like, because why? it slipped off my shoulder. Okay, but then it's like holding I, I can't, I can't do that, Karam. This is what you don't understand. I cannot do this with my shoulder. <sighs> we saw some incredible light and leaf color changes that day. There were moments the sky seemed split between dark clouds and blinding sunshine. It really doesn't. We had three portages that day, and around 3 p.m., I really sure? started losing steam. Maybe because of my period, or maybe just fatigue, but the last three hours of the day, I was just focusing on pushing one foot in front of the other. I can't even word. <laughs> She is done. She's kaput. By the time we got to our new home on Catfish Lake, mm -hmm. we were both so ready to sleep. I am so physically exhausted. Just as we were making dinner, a big storm rolled in. Very stormy out there, so we are going to just eat and then call it a day. And forcing us to crawl under a makeshift table for shelter. Cramped, we cooked up two meals back to back. Without brushing our teeth, we crawled into our tent and passed the fuck out immediately. Woke up to more rain, lol, and decided to take a rest day. If we set up a tarp shelter, we could go about our day without getting too wet. Yeah, see, this is fine. Little did we know we'd both never done this before. Not only could we not agree on how best to keep the rain out, but we couldn't execute yeah, either one of our plans. Finally, we settled for this shitty structure. Like we are here, you know, like how much better can this get, you know? Slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> Elena is angry and is grumpy and I'm she's not. just I, she directs her angerness and grumpiness angerness. towards others. Angerness. I just want that pointed out. <laughs> Okay, haha, ha. Karam is ESL, wow, wow, wow. Karam has been living in an English speaking country way longer than Eleanor, actually. You have English speaking parents. You're literally your British. You speak English too. Excuse me, have you heard your accent? I know, it's pretty nice, eh? <laughs> and then we're just gonna go hang out in the tent, play some cards, read, just enjoy the downtime, get some rest, and enjoy each other's company. Waiting for that mean comment, let's go. <laughs> no, 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 I love your company. I'm just chilling, relax. It's a rest day. Back inside the tent, life got much better again. Spending it horizontally. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it do be like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sometimes you just have to. What was the term you said? It do be like that. <laughs> It do be like that? What's a doobie? <laughs> <laughs> we spent the day drying out our clothes between rain showers, eating lots of pasta and reading. I 
took some time to sit down and explain how I dealt with my period during this trip. So I'm about to boil my diva cup. I'm just gonna pop it in there because honestly it's a pretty impractical thing just ever but especially when you're camping I use the diva cup which is obviously like I've been using it for years but for people who are going on camping trips it's a really useful investment you don't have to trail around sort of um, blood covered trash essentially like tampons or pads it freaks me out a little bit the idea of having like blood covered items with us at all times when you know there are bears around and things like that and also there's no waste that I think is the biggest part um, so it's like ecologically friendly it is a nuisance you do have to sort of take it out whether it's raining you know it's cold it's in the middle of the night you have to take it out you have to wash it you do have to boil it like you have to disinfect it it's not nice you kind of have to get out of the tent naked go down to the water wash yourself it's cold I still think it's important to be aware that for most people who menstruate it is a serious consideration when planning a lengthy outdoor trip. I'm glad that I'm doing this with the cup. Like, I would recommend out of 10 for everybody to do it with the cup. This is gonna look exactly the same as when I put it in, which is kind of gross, because I've had it for so many years. It's very stained. It's not dirty, it's just stained. So yeah, now it's all disinfected, clean, ready to be reinserted, which we are not gonna be filming. <laughs> so, one more round of pasta. <laughs> because why not? And then, bed, read, and then tomorrow. Tomorrow, early start. <laughs> oh, <I'm> so cold. <laughs> it's particularly cold this morning, so we got dressed in here, in our sleeping bags. <laughs> now we're ready to go out into the world and tackle this day. <laughs> Not ready. <laughs> Not ready. <laughs> Sun will rise a storm will burst into our home Yeah. If I turn pale of Stop, like your mind's always just like in the moment. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of my favorite thing about it, you know? Like they're so so few moments where I think about the outside world. We're ready to go on this fine cold morning. I honestly can't tell you much about the next day because I was bad and skipped writing in my diary. As I remember it, paddled a lot and completed a 2.3 kilometer portage, which was our longest yet. We both collapsed at the end of it. Eating cliff bars and just sitting with the content realization we are already so much better at this than we had started. Oh. <laughs> this is like a crack. <laughs> cliff bar should sponsor us. I don't think he's ever seen anybody enjoy a cliff bar like this. This on day one would have been impossible. It was impossible. We did a 2.21 and it took so long. Whoa. So, <laughs> we're at our last portage of the day, our last portage before a halfway point where we get to Cedar Lake. And I'm really excited about it because I'm so dead. <laughs> last one before, before Cedar. And we can have all the chips we want! I think it's safe to say that by day nine, we had both yes. lost our minds a little. And had become weird in that <laughs> way you could only be after being in isolation with one uh, other person. Because I'm salty like I'm a chip. Because so I'm salty tired. like a chip. Because I'm salty, <laughs> salty, salty like a chip. Twerk! <laughs> I don't think we should be allowed with a camera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we finally arrived onto Cedar Lake before characteristically making two meals and promptly falling fast asleep. We woke up in a great mood the next morning on our 10th day in our Ronkin Park. You coming? Yeah. Not only did we decide to take a rest day, 
But Brent was our restock location, where we'd had our food resupply boxes dropped off in advance. But most importantly, eat chips. Yeah, eat chips. He's a lightweight canoe that's meant to portage. Maybe he doesn't like the life that someone else chose for him. <laughs> but sometimes... Truffle's a free canoe! <laughs> but sometimes you have to accept who you are. Truffle likes Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> and blankets. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? All the places that their best friends Jake showed us where our food drop is. So basically what we're gonna do now is uh, go through our barrel, put the trash away, and then restock everything. So right now I've unpacked everything from the barrel. Um, and I'm about to repack it in. I just wanted to make sure, like count everything, make sure we have enough food for the second pot. All right, so on my end of things, I've put everything to charge, like the power banks, computer, camera batteries, and phones, and all that kind of stuff, because the sun has not been the best friend for us here lately. Um, so we just want to make sure that everything is charged before we get on the lake again. And while we do this, I'm also doing file transfers. So I'm emptying all the memory cards that I have used up. How long have you lived here for? I've been in Brent 39 years. Wow. But I lived in the park all my life. So. We met Jake, who's been living in the park his entire life. <laughs> he liked my name because it sounds old fashioned. So I didn't stop to explain it's Eleanor, not Eleanor. <laughs> According to him, old names are making a comeback. This guy basically is the park. How many people used to live in Brent? Uh, the school had 65, no, 65. The school had 38 kids in at one time. His mother was a school teacher down in the southwestern corner of the park, and his father worked for the railroad. Yeah. And Brent used to be a town, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I heard something about like a railway station. Railway and lumber. Okay. okay. Two big rivers come in here. And in, up till 1945, all, the, all these big lakes had alligators on them and stuff, and they floated all the logs down the rivers. So this was a collection point for a lot of logs and a carry-on point to get the logs down to the, to the Ottawa River. So this was the biggest. There were little railroad towns everywhere because the steam engine needed help every 20 miles. Had to get water and coal. So it used to be quite populated. Yeah. And when the... Diesels came in. Diesels didn't near, need the service that the coal trains did. Some of these little towns disappeared. Mm -hmm. And when did it become a park? 1893. Okay, yeah. so, so a great time ago. Yeah. So when did Brent stop being a town? The last railway ran here in, in 1995, mm -hmm. not too long ago. Wonderful, <laughs> wow. Thanks for the history. Yeah, lots of history. Yeah. yeah. We got his email address so we could send him the videos we made. So here's hoping you like our videos, Jake. Anyways, we loaded up with chips and salsa. Thank you, Jake. Returning triumphant to our camp for the night with all our tech charged up and warm from an afternoon spent indoors. Hello. That is a horrible angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, I don't know what your angle is. You don't. This is okay. This is this is what you should know by now. Oh, baby, no, I know what your angle is. But you, how do I get your angle when you're sitting? Like, you it's like no, no, no. <laughs> this is not my angle. <laughs> Karam and I both came to the realization today that we're a bit over it. I think today I'm really feeling like okay, I'm kind of over this. <laughs> Same. We were like back there, and I was just like, oh, I can't let's just get into a car and drive off. Because like we already did something like pretty impressive you know yes but now we're really gonna push ourselves like yeah. our limits it really is it's the putting one foot in front of the other just to make it instead of actually enjoying, enjoying. the journey yeah you know which is still fine it's, it's still just fine. it's just like it's a different kind of mental fortitude the initial excitement of evenings spent stargazing and eating camp food has worn off and we kind of like to spend a cozy night in a proper bed but this is what we came for the hard part the challenge, the discomfort. Oh, uh, it hurt, it hurt. This is the moment of learning, and we're going to take it all in. Add penny to noodles. Who does that? <laughs>